Hey, what's up guys? Betty here and over the past week, I've been playing Call of Duty Warzone for around 8 to 10 hours a day to help put together my 40 top tips in order to help you win as many games of Warzone as possible. This video is going to cover everything that you need to know to win a game of Warzone from how to start your game, how to get more money, how to win your 1v1s in the Gulag, how to get more kills and of course get those all important wins. So everything you need to know that I've learned in one single video. This video will have tips for everyone whether you're a beginner or a professional and also please do share your own tips down in the comments below. So my first tip for Call of Duty Warzone is choosing where to drop. Getting off to a good start is crucial to success in Warzone as the better you start the quicker you get your loadouts the faster you're going to rack up more kills. So every game you'll want to start off with a scavenger contract. I'll always usually choose to drop early to get ahead in the money race which means more money meaning more equipment to use in the middle to end game compared to people that drop later on the plane's path. Now if you play with friends you can easily get the first scavenger contract done within 60 seconds which means you'll have enough money for the loadout drop straight away. Your first player goes straight down and picks up the contract. Player two and three wait in the air for the contract to be picked up and player two goes for the first crate, player three for the second and then whoever is closest goes for the third and final crate and you'll also get some gas masks which are worth 3k each. Now to make sure you're dropping as quickly as possible you'll want to make sure that your parachute is open for the least amount of time. First of all if you want to land on a roof aim for just past the edge and then move forward at the last possible moment to trigger the parachute which will also mean that you draw your gun quicker which could make all the difference. Also, remember, you can survive a fall of around three floors high. So as soon as you can, you should be cutting that shoot away. There should never be a situation where you touch the ground with your shoot still open. My next tip for Call of Duty Warzone is one that most players overlook. The default minimap for Warzone is a circle, but you can change this to square, which is going to give you around 20% more visibility in the corners, which could help you spot enemy players. And a bigger minimap is just a better minimap. The other key setting that you're going to want to make sure you've got switched on in the settings is contextual tap. This allows you to loot with a single button press rather than a hold, saving valuable time and also allows you to be constantly moving. The amount of kills I've picked up in Warzone because someone is taking too long to loot an item is ridiculous, especially at early and end game. My next tip for Warzone is to share your money within your team. The second you've completed that first scavenger contract, you'll get 2k each. Combined, that's enough for a loadout drop. So as soon as it's complete, get to the nearest buy station and call in your loadout. Also, just share your money as you go on throughout the game. There's no point one player hoarding all the cash because if they're taken out, you're likely going to lose all that money as well, which could stop you respawning them back into the game. So in order to fully take advantage of the loadout drop, you'll need to do a bit of preparation before going into a game with your loadouts. First of all, make sure the class you want to use is your first class. This allows you to get your class super quickly from the drop so you don't have to hang around as enemy players could potentially see it come down and decide to rush you. Your first class should also have overkill. This allows you to get an assault rifle or SMG and a sniper rifle which are incredibly powerful in Warzone. I personally use the Growl with the Monolithic Suppressor, 26.4 Archangel Barrel, the Cronin Shark 2 Underbarrel, 50 Round Mag and the Cronin Sniper Elite, which makes it one of the best assault rifles in Warzone. Then because I'm using Overkill, I use the HDR Sniper Rifle with a Monolithic Suppressor, 26.9 HDR Pro Barrel, the Merc Thermal Optic, FTAC Stalker Scout Stock and then the Focus Perk to help make sure I land those headshots. For perks, I use Cold Blooded to stay off other thermal scopes and Tune Up for faster revives to get my teammates up as quickly as I can. Then, as you can see with my class, my next tip is to make sure that you use C4. It will hands down save your life. Try not to use it in a gunfight, but save at least one for when an enemy vehicle comes in your direction. Vehicles in Warzone are incredibly powerful and hard to take out and C4 is one of the strongest counters to them in the game. The heartbeat sensor is also one of the most powerful items in the game. Yes, players that have managed to get the ghost perk from a loadout won't appear but it's a great way to find out if enemy players are in a building that you're about to enter or the exact direction and location of an opponent in a gunfight if you lose track of them. 
Get into the habit of when you're in the passenger seat of a vehicle or just moving around the map to give most buildings a quick scan. So have in the back of your head that players still might be there with Ghost if nothing appears on the scanner. So don't just run in blindly. Now, my next tip for Call of Duty Warzone is to do with the scope that I use on my sniper. You may have realized that I use the Merc Thermal Optic. Now, I don't just do this because I want to have thermal, but I use it because it has a 3.25 times magnification, which means that it doesn't give that infamous sniper glint that blows so many people's positions away. Only scopes with 3.5 times magnification or higher give the sniper glint. So the Merc Thermal removes that and is also really easy to use and land headshots with, from my experience, at distances that you want to be getting into gunfights in Warzone. So make sure to give it a go and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Now, my next tip is you never only want to use one loadout drop in a match. Using Overkill first to get two fully kitted out weapons is incredibly powerful, but Tier 2 perks are also some of the best in the game. So you want to do the loadout perk swap, which means you make an identical class to the one that you're using, but you change the second perk to either Ghost if you want to keep off radar and heartbeat sensors or high alert, which lets you know when you've been spotted by an enemy player and from what direction, which is also incredibly useful to have. Just remember to pick your second weapon back up off the floor when you do it for the second time. My next tip for you to win more games in Call of Duty Warzone is to make sure that you're using your equipment. If you come across claymores or proximity mines, put them down. You never know, it may just pick you up a free kill later on in the match. But one of the best things that you can use is when you find stopping power rounds. There is no time limit to when those stopping power rounds run out. So when you find the pickup, add it to your assault rifle or SMG and it will massively help you out in your next gunfight. My next tip is something that I don't see enough players doing in Call of Duty Warzone, which is taking full advantage of your tactical map. Whenever you call in something like a UAV, your squad should place pings on the red dots to get a clearer idea of where enemies currently are and at what distance. You can do the exact same thing when you hear gunshots. It just helps to give you and your team a better understanding of the dangers around you and where you should position yourself. And talking of UAVs, make sure you spend the money that you earn, especially at end game. There's no point of winning a game with 50k in your team's pocket. You can even do things like call in three UAVs at the same time to effectively get a VSAT, which will display every enemy player's location, even if they have the ghost perk active. It's the most expensive item in the game, costing 12k combined, but especially in the later circles can give you and your team a big advantage by knowing exactly where everyone is, which is going to help you pick up the win. Which brings me on to my next tip for Warzone, which is all about positioning. There is never a situation in Call of Duty Warzone where you want to be getting into a gunfight without the upper hand in some way, whether that's getting the first down with a sniper shot, having the high ground, or players being forced towards you from the gas. You want to do everything in your power to always have some kind of advantage, so always be looking one step ahead at where the best positions are. Being by a buy station isn't one of them because a lot of players will be drawn towards it, especially at end game, to try and buy their teammates back. However, having a good view of the buy station from the top of a hill, for example, can lead to some very easy kills for you to pick up and one step closer to that win. And that also brings me on to my next tip, which is know when to start a gunfight. I see so many players, the second they see an opponent, get a little bit excited and just start shooting straight away, which blows their position. You don't want to do this. You want to read the situation and wait for the opportune moment. If you've got a sniper, wait for someone to just stand still for a moment to get a clean headshot. Or you want to try and get a little bit closer with your assault rifle to down someone before they can even react because they might be looking at their map or using a buy station or dropping something for their teammates. If you've not been spotted, try and use that time to gain a significant advantage and you'll win a lot more team fights and get a lot more kills in Warzone. The next thing you want to be doing is paying attention to your surroundings and other indicators on the map. One of the biggest of these is flares from buy stations and recon bounties. When an enemy team redeploys a teammate from a buy station, a red flare will be launched for each player respawned. 
When you see this, you know you'll have a player advantage on that team and is a good time to push if you've got a full squad. Also, on the other hand, if you're the last player up and you're trying to get your own teammates back in, you might find it's not the right buy station to head towards, so you should go to a different one. However, the more obvious flares that you'll see in the game is when someone is capturing a recon bounty, as they have to be in a very small area. If you're going for kills, these are great areas to push because a lot of them are out in the open, so if you've got a good sniper shot, you can pick up some very easy downs and kills. It's honestly something that I don't see players take advantage of enough because the mode is still new and players are still getting used to all the mechanics. But I think in the future, recon contracts are going to be a little bit more dangerous than they are now. But they're also one of the most useful to complete. Completing a recon bounty will give you a sneak peek at the next ring and it also stacks. So if you complete enough recon bounties early in the game, you can know exactly where the game is going to end up. So you could go and set a ton of traps or get the best possible position to give yourself the best chance of winning the game. You won't get the most kills with this method, but you'll be far more likely to win the match. One of the best things you can purchase from a buy station for 4,500 is a self revive, which will not only save your life when you get downed in a team fight, but it also has a trick for you to take advantage of. If you start reviving yourself with the self revive, you can get to the point where you nearly complete it and then allow a teammate to finish off the revive, meaning they pick you up far quicker with less risk to their own life and you also get to keep a hold of that self revive for a later date. Another big thing to be aware of in Call of Duty Warzone is the sound effect that's made when a player is revived. This effect plays both when revived by a teammate or a self revive is used. So if you've downed a player and hear the sound effect, you know that team is going to be back to full strength. Though you'll get a few seconds when they're likely going to try and armor up to clear the squad as they're going to be closer together. But just listen out for that sound effect if you're pushing an enemy team. My next tip for Warzone is to make sure that you take full advantage of vehicles because they're overpowered. Not only are they powerful weapons in themselves, I've taken out numerous squads just with a vehicle when coming back from the gulag at mid to late game. But a couple of other things that you'll want to do is when you're using the Jeep or truck is to reverse into your opponents. They won't have a clear view of you in the driver's seat, so it makes it harder for them to take you out. Next, if you're playing with a team, all grab your own vehicles if you can. There's no full damage from getting out of a moving vehicle, so it is an incredibly effective way of rushing an enemy team before they have time to react and get a good position to fight from. They'll also be focusing on the driver's seat, so get surprised when you just appear out of nowhere. And if you're in your own vehicles, one well-placed C4 or RPG isn't going to wipe out your squad. Plus, people tend to panic when being rushed by vehicles as they just don't know exactly what to do. One thing to be aware of in Call of Duty Warzone is if you're using a thermal scope to remember that glass for some reason just stops thermal from working. So if you're scanning the area with your thermal, make sure to break the glass first. Next, sadly, at some point you're going to get sent to the gulag when you get taken out for a 1v1. There are some things that you can do, however, to help increase your chance of winning and get back into the match. First of all, you can get a strong idea of where an enemy player is going to push from their outline before the 1v1 starts. Most people will actually look straight away at the direction that they're going to run towards, so be aware of that. Most players don't think about that outline, but I've won a number of rounds really easily because I know exactly what part of the map the enemy is going to rush. Also, before you get into a match, you can even spray paint your opponent to make them a bit more obvious in the dark gulag, where you can sometimes miss a small movement. The best time to spray paint someone is when they inevitably start punching you in the face for no reason whatsoever. Another small tip and something that you may not know about in the gulag is that you get your health back when it goes into overtime, which you may have noticed from the bars at the top of your screen. So if you get hit early on, maybe try and slow play the rest of the 1v1 to get to that overtime phase and get your health back. Another thing that you can do to help you win more gunfights in Call of Duty Warzone is to take advantage of the three different types of movement shots that you have available to you. The first one is my favorite, which is the jump shot. What you want to do is when pushing an opponent around a corner is to jump out of the corner. This makes it harder for your opponent to track you, especially if they were pre-aiming that particular corner. 
You can then do the same thing, but with a slide instead. Mixing up and finding what works best for you is one of the best things to do in Warzone. Jump shotting is a little bit more difficult unless you're using an elite controller or you play claw, while slide shooting when using the tactical button layout is a pretty easy thing to do. But then you have the third and probably most famous Call of Duty maneuver, the drop shot. In the middle of a gunfight, don't be afraid to just drop into prone. Players don't always expect this and can help you win some easy gunfights. My next tip for you to win more games in Call of Duty Warzone is to bait loadout drops. When loadout drops come into the game, your teams and the other teams will be put equally between you. Most teams will rush these loadout drops because they are so powerful, which gives you the perfect opportunity to pick up some kills. So get yourself a strong position, aim at them with snipers, or prepare a kill streak like an airstrike. You can do the exact same if you see a loadout dropping from the sky, which is being called in by an enemy team through the buy station. As most players don't use the loadout drop quick enough, it can really be an opportunity for some of the easiest kills that you'll pick up in Call of Duty Warzone. Another little trick that you can do in Warzone is to booby trap vehicles. If you see a helicopter nearby and you've got a C4, hide the C4 on the back of the chopper, wait for an unsuspecting team to take off in it, and just blow the C4. You can do the same with cars and trucks, and they'll just never see it coming. This next tip can really help you to win a match at endgame. Do not be afraid of the gas if you've got a gas mask. Use it to your advantage. I will purposefully go into the gas and try and reposition myself behind the enemy team. But because of the animation of taking the mask on and off, wait until you've got the mask off from it breaking before shooting or moving out of the gas, even if it does mean you take a couple of damage ticks. This has single-handedly helped me win a lot of games as people just don't expect it. This play is especially powerful if you've got a syringe as your tactical. Sometimes it's worth not having every member of your squad carrying a heartbeat sensor, but one or two of you having syringes so they can survive in the gas longer. This can also be life-saving if you've misjudged the distance from the zone and get caught in the gas. Another thing that you're going to want to do to win more games of Warzone is to save streaks for endgame. An airstrike or a UAV could make all the difference in that final circle, so try not to blow all your streaks at once as a team and use them when you really have to. This next tip is one that you might not get to take advantage of that often, but is incredibly exciting for the future of Call of Duty Warzone. Some of you may have found it, and some of you may have not, but there is an MGL-32 grenade launcher, which is the rarest weapon in the game and can only be found in legendary crates, and it is ridiculously powerful. This thing is the most effective at taking out enemies inside of buildings or enemy vehicles and is something that you should definitely pick up if you come across it. It also means that we're likely to get other Warzone exclusive weapons in the future and maybe that's something that we'll get in those secret vaults once we start gaining access to them. But it's also one of the few weapons where you might want to consider purchasing a munitions box from the buy station for, because a munitions box will give you max ammo for the grenade launcher, along with max ammo for your other weapon as well as the rest of your team. Munitions boxes are also incredible for early game for when you call in your first loadout drop or if you get brought back into the game via the gulag or from a buy station. My next tip for you in Warzone is to make sure that you use an operator that blends into the surroundings. Some operators like the pre-order bonus can even give you a full-blown ghillie suit which in certain areas of the map is ridiculously effective. Make sure to choose operators that have darker outfits that blend into shadows and darker areas of the map. It may seem silly, but some operator skins definitely give you a competitive advantage, especially those ones that have a ghillie suit, and others, well, they just blow your position and make you easier to kill. And then my final tip for you in this Call of Duty Warzone tips video is to make sure that you've got the best audio setup. Being able to hear things like enemy footsteps, nearby gunshots, or enemy revives is going to be crucial to success. Using high boost will help bring those footsteps out in the sound mix, but also using a headset is going to give you a big competitive advantage in being able to pinpoint where sounds are coming from, which is just going to help you win a lot more games. But there we have it, 40 of my best tips and tricks to help you improve at Call of Duty Warzone. Please, if you do have any other tips or tricks that you found yourself, do go ahead and share them down in the comment section below. I know I and many others will really appreciate it. And if you're new to the channel, do make sure to subscribe for more Call of Duty Warzone content. Smash that like button as it really does help. And I'll see you guys next time.